After looking through well over a hundred S Pen cases for the Galaxy Z Fold 3, I finally found the top five, as well as a bonus S Pen accessory that you won't want to miss. Before we get started, if you haven't bought a Galaxy Z Fold 3 yet and want to get up to $1,300 off when you trade in a newer device or get $440 off a Fold 3, Galaxy Buds 2, and a wireless charger bundle, click my exclusive link down in the description. I'll also have other exclusive Black Friday deals on things like the Galaxy Watch 4, Tab S7, and the Galaxy Book Pro if you're interested. And if you're in a rush, I'll have Amazon links to all the cases in the description so you can quickly find what you want. And I'll also have video time codes so you can jump around the video to find the type of case you're looking for. And don't forget to drop a like if you appreciate video time codes. We're going to start this off with the doo-doo case. That's doo too, but if you say it too fast, it does sound a bit like doo-doo, but I promise there's nothing doo-doo about this case. Okay, well there's a little bit doo-doo about this case, but I'll get to that in a minute. If you're looking for the best wallet case that also supports an S Pen, this is it. The leather is genuine and it does feel very premium. The stitching is also really well done as well. Opening it up, you'll see two card slots as well as a money slot in this flap here. And there's also a very soft fabric material here that protects the hinge of your Fold 3, although I do wish it was a little bit thicker. Protecting your phone is a hard plastic case that only wraps around one half of the phone. I'm gonna go ahead and toss the phone in now. So as you can see, you just have protection on the back side of the phone. The front side of the phone doesn't have any protection unless you close the case. But when you do close the case, you do get pretty good drop protection. On the front, you have this nice thick panel. And on the back, you have a thick panel as well with plenty of space above the cameras. So you're definitely not going to hit those unless maybe like a pebble lands right in the middle. If you drop it on the hinge, it's going to be pretty well protected. But again, I would prefer that this section was a bit more padded. Dropping the phone on the bottom or one of the corners, you're not going to get the best drop protection because this does kind of slide out of the way when you push on it. And that really increases the risk of damaging the corner of your device. Dropping it on this side, you do get some protection because these little flaps are here and these do hold together magnetically. And in case you're wondering why the flaps are here, my guess is that it's so that the S Pen would continue to work because if you had a flap that wrapped all the way around to the back, then you'd have to have a magnet here as well. And when you open your phone and go to use the S Pen, it wouldn't actually work in the section where the magnet is. And in terms of drop protection with the case open, you don't actually get that much at all. If I hold this up to the camera, you can see that there's barely a lip there giving you face down drop protection. This case is really just to protect the sides of the phone when it's open, and then you do get the full protection when it's closed. Looking at the top of the case, you can see that there are three holes so that you can take a call with the case closed, because that would be really annoying to have to keep this open to take a call and have this flap keep hitting you in the face. Not only that, but you'd also probably look a bit ridiculous. Alternatively, you can just fold it back and hold it like this. For this case, the S Pen is held with this elastic strap right here. And this is a really, really stiff elastic. The first time I tried to get this S Pen in, I actually couldn't push it through because it was too tight. And if I pushed too hard, I actually just would have broken the tip of my S Pen. So I actually had to put it in backwards and really try to work it in there to get the back in and kind of just force it through to the bottom. And then I just had to kind of keep it there like this for, I don't know, maybe like an hour or so. And that loosened it up enough for me to be able to put the tip of the S Pen in first. Since this is a very tight elastic, I do recommend that you push on the top of the S Pen to start getting it out and then pull on the other side to finish taking it out. But since it does hold so tightly, there's absolutely no way you're gonna lose your S Pen when it's in this case. And in case you're wondering, you can get the S Pen Pro in here, but it definitely takes some work and you're gonna have to let this stretch for a while uh, for this to be a functional case with the S Pen Pro. However, unfortunately, when you do put the S Pen Pro in, it is going to stick up off the top because the S Pen is significantly taller than the Fold 3 itself. So if you don't mind the S Pen sticking out on top, then you can do this. And here it is with five thick cards in here. That's about the max you're gonna get before this strap won't hold close anymore. But if you have really thin rewards cards and things like that, you'll obviously be able to fit more. That said, I wouldn't try to put too many cards in here because you will stretch this out. And then if you decide to go a little bit lighter and only have two cards in, they're just gonna slide right out. So just be mindful of that. And in case you're wondering, when I did this test, I did not have any cash in here. One very important thing to note with these card slots is that the magnetic strip on your credit card needs to go on the inside because if it goes on the outside, what happens when you close the case is that that magnetic strip is going to be next to the magnets that actually hold the phone closed. 
and that can actually damage the magnetic strip. One bonus feature with this case is that you can fold the cover back and use it as a stand. It does take a bit of finagling to get it to work just right, but it does work. And it works both in the closed and open orientations. Wireless charging does work with this case as long as you take the S Pen out first. So if I drop this on my charger, you'll see right here that it has started wirelessly charging. Next up is an excellent S Pen case that's slim and still gives you decent protection. This is the Spigen ThinFit P. Flipping over to the inside of the case, you'll see a bunch of pull tabs that reveal these little adhesives here that help the case stick to your phone. I personally haven't pulled these off yet because once this sticks to your phone, it holds on really good. And since I'm testing multiple cases, I didn't want to wear out the adhesive. Something important that I do want to point out real quick is that you probably shouldn't use this adhesive strip right here because this lines up perfectly with the millimeter wave antenna on the side of your Galaxy Z Fold 3. And I have heard of cases where this little cap actually pulls off because of the adhesive. And I'm pretty sure you can just stick this back on if it comes off, but better safe than sorry. And I have heard a bunch of people complain about having to use adhesives to keep the case on, but the thing you need to remember about a phone like this is that the case can only wrap around three sides of the phone, so there's nothing to grab on the other side to stop it from just sliding right off. So that's why most manufacturers have resorted to using adhesives to make sure their case stays on. I'm going to go ahead and pop this on the phone now. The first thing you notice when you put this case on are the large bulges at the top and the bottom, and these are actually where the S Pen goes. When you put the S Pen in, you have to make sure to put the bottom in first, then slide the top in. If you were to put the top in first, then try to slide the bottom in. Let me actually get a close up here so you can see it better. As you can see, the tip of the S Pen isn't actually making it into the hole. So if I pushed hard on this right now to snap it into place, I would actually just snap my S Pen tip right in half. And I actually did exactly that with the S Pen on my Galaxy S21 with a very similar case. So just make sure you put the bottom in first, slide it down, and it'll snap right into place. And not surprisingly, the S Pen Pro does not fit in this case. If you want to maximize the amount of space you have for your thumb to get onto the scanner back here, just make sure that the flat part of the S Pen is facing towards the back of the phone. And that'll give you just a little bit more room to get your thumb in there. And one more tip for making the fingerprint sensor more reliable with this case on is to make sure that when you register your fingerprints, you register the edges of your finger as well. After doing that, I've had no issues trying to unlock the phone. Something that also took a bit of getting used to was the fact that I now had to reach further to get to the other side of the phone because this is now pushing my hand further out. But I got used to that pretty quickly. And if you're someone who uses the edge panels, those are still easily accessible. This should go without saying, but this case does obviously work with wireless charging as well. In terms of protection, you do get considerable protection for face down drops as well as back drops. The top and bottom of the phone is also well protected, as is the side of the phone. However, there is no hinge protection with this case. When the phone is open, you do get a tiny bit of a lip for face down drop protection, but it really isn't too much. So I do recommend folding the phone back up when you're done using it. Next up, we have the Fay 10 Folio case. This is a fabric case that's very soft touch and premium feeling. They did a great job on the stitching with this one, and it is quite a protective case as well. So if I go ahead and open this up, you'll see that there are actually two pieces to this case. There is a hard back shell, and there's also a hard front shell that you can install as well. Something that is notably missing from this is a credit card holder. Let's go ahead and pop the phone in and take a closer look. The first thing I want to point out is that this case does offer a considerable amount of protection because you do have these two hard shells. And then when the case is closed, you have this soft shell here and a soft shell here that does have a pretty decent gap between the back of the case and the cameras for some added camera protection. So for this case, it doesn't really matter which side you drop it on, you're going to get some pretty solid protection. One of the first things you might be thinking when you see this little strap here is that the magnet's going to interfere with the S Pen as I mentioned on the other case. But since they put the magnet on the front of the case instead of on the back of the case, when you open the phone, the magnet is actually off the edge, so it doesn't actually interfere with the S Pen. You'll just have to make sure that you don't fold the strap back. And in case you're wondering exactly what the S Pen does when you try to draw with a magnet behind the screen, it looks something like this. So as you can see, there's a section that's not getting any drawing done on it as I run the S Pen up and down. And so that tells me that the magnet is right here. And if I flip the phone over, you see that that's exactly where the tab is. And if I pull the tab back out and start drawing again, I can draw right over that region. 
The fabric that holds the S Pen in place is very elastic, and I feel like it is possible for this to kind of stretch out over time, but currently it does a great job of holding the S Pen in place. One important thing to note about putting the S Pen in is that if you just kind of hold it flat and just try to slide it in, it's gonna kind of get stuck. But if you hold the back of the S Pen up and then push in, it actually slides in quite easily. And in case you're wondering, the S Pen Pro does fit in this case, but it does stick out the top considerably. And just like with the other folio case, you can prop your phone up with this one as well. And this does work with both the outer and inner screens. Wireless charging does work with this case as well. One of the benefits to this case is that you don't have to first take the S Pen out to charge it. And you can see right here that it has started wirelessly charging. The one downside with this case is that there's no adhesive to keep this cover on, so it can actually slide right off pretty easily. Fortunately, the bottom part of the case does stay on pretty well because it is held in place by the camera module. If you do want to get adhesives for this, I'm pretty sure you can find some on Amazon, and if I find some, I'll go ahead and drop a link down in the description. Next up, we have Samsung's official S Pen case. I'm not a terribly big fan of this case for a number of reasons, but I did want to include it because this is the only official Samsung S Pen case. Flipping it open, you do get very soft touch material on the inside to protect your phone, and you'll see that it only clips on to the back of the phone. So if I go ahead and pop this in, you'll see that I only get protection on the back half. And if I were to drop the phone on one of the edges, you'll see that this just kind of pushes right out of the way. So you're not really getting much protection at all on the edges of your phone. And the same is true for the side of the phone. Not only that, but dropping it on the back is also not gonna be that great because there's barely a lip protecting your cameras. Another issue with this case is that it doesn't stay closed. Every time I push the cover all the way closed and let go, it just rocks back open a little bit. And if you put the S Pen in, it's even worse. And in case you're wondering, the S Pen Pro does not fit in this case. Opening the case reveals another issue. Since the S Pen sits right at the center of the case, when you lay it down, it sits at a huge slant, and whenever you tap the side, it just kind of rocks without much force at all. And the reason this isn't a problem with any of the other cases is because the S Pen doesn't sit in the center when you open up the case. As you can see, it's all the way off to the side. And so when I lay this down and poke on one of the sides, nothing wobbles. Fortunately, you can remove this little S Pen case here by pushing up on it and sliding it off, and that does allow you to lay the phone flat. Another bonus to taking the sleeve off is that the cover finally stays on. And speaking of the cover, this does have a wake sleep feature. So if I open it up, it automatically wakes the phone. And when I close it, it automatically puts the phone to sleep. That is a feature that none of the other cases have. Using the phone one-handed is a bit cumbersome with this case. If you just kind of let it flap down, that does work good enough, but you don't have that strong of a grip on the phone when you're doing it this way. Typically, you'd like to fold this behind the phone, and that does kind of work, but you get this really big, bulky, kind of awkward grip when you do that. And it's not the most enjoyable experience. And if you try to flatten this back end down to make it more comfortable for your fingers to grip, it pushes the other end out into your hands, making your thumb further away from the screen. Overall, it's just not very comfortable to use with it folded back like this. Holding the phone open is fine enough. If you hold it with two hands, this kind of does get in the way a little bit, but it's not too bad. You can kind of push it back, make this shape here. And that's good enough. It's really not too bad holding it like this. And it should go without saying that this case does support wireless charging. The only other good thing I can say about this case is that it does feel very premium. So Samsung has done a good job with the materials on this, but it is very hard to recommend because you don't get much drop protection. The S Pen placement isn't really the best. The only saving grace is that this piece does come off. And if I was gonna use this as my personal case, I'd probably just keep these two separated in my pocket. One of the benefits to this is that it does protect the tip of the pen because this is a very hard case. So that still allows me to have my S Pen with me while having a more functional case. If you like the styling of this case and you can live with the compromises I mentioned, I'll leave a link in the description for you. And let me know down in the comments below if you have this case. And if you do enjoy it, let me know what you like about the case. Now let's take a look at my personal favorite case. This is the one that I've been keeping on my phone most often. This is the Demsert case. I'm pretty sure I totally butchered that name, but it is a great case. This is a hard plastic case, 
and the front cover does have an adhesive strip here to keep it on. The back cover hugs the camera module, so you don't really need the adhesive on this piece. The drop protection with this case is relatively minor. You don't get quite as much drop protection as you do with the Spigen case that I showed you guys a bit earlier, but it's still a really decent case. If you're looking for something that's very compact, that still holds the S Pen. Speaking of which, the S Pen slides into this slot in the back, and this makes for an extremely compact design. And in case you're wondering, the S Pen Pro does technically fit in here, but it is gonna stretch out a ton. It is gonna stick out of the top a lot. So I don't personally recommend doing it, even though it's technically possible. Opening the phone up, you can see that there isn't that much of a lip on this case, so you won't get too much protection for face down drops on the main screen. The cover screen, however, does get a pretty decent lip, so you will get pretty good protection there. And the back will give you decent protection as well. There isn't too much of a lip over the cameras here, but if you have the S Pen installed, that's gonna prevent the cameras from touching anyway because this does protrude pretty far. And just like with most of the other cases, you don't get any hinge protection here either. And one of the big benefits to having the S Pen right here on the back is that it gives you something to grip the phone by when you're using the main screen. Wireless charging does work with this case on as long as you remove the S Pen from this sleeve. And in case you're wondering, this is not a hard shell. This is actually a fabric sleeve that bends pretty easily. If you want to attach the S Pen to an existing case that you have, then this is the accessory for you. This is the ring key pen sleeve, and the S Pen slides into this sleeve right here. And the back side of this has double stick tape, so you can actually just stick this right to the back of an existing case. So for example, if I want to have my S Pen attached to this rugged VRS design kickstand case, all I'd have to do is attach the pen holder here. And just like that, I now have my S Pen attached to my kickstand case. And what's great about these holders is you can actually get them in a pack of a three and it's very inexpensive. So now I can attach two of these to hold the S Pen on more securely. And another benefit is that this now acts as another grip point just like the other case. And one more piece of advice, I recommend that you hide this S Pen tip within the sleeve to help protect it. And in case you're wondering, you can fit the S Pen Pro in this as well, but again, it is gonna stick up over the top of the foam. The one notable downside to this is that the S Pen is going to be lined up in the center of the phone. So when you put the phone down, it's going to rock back and forth pretty easily. But if you're okay with that compromise, this is a great accessory to get. And in case you're wondering, here's what the kickstand looks like on this VRS design case. And you can stand the phone up in two different orientations. And those two orientations work with both the inner screen and the cover screen. And one more great use case for this would be with a case that has hinge protection like this Spigen Tough Armor case. And if you want to learn more about any of the cases I've shown in this video, all the links will be in the description. Let me know what your favorite S Pen case is in the comments below and consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my top unknown features video for the Z Fold 3. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.